That pro wrestler, great guy, superstar Billy Graham right there. Yes. He lives across the street from me and is the nicest guy if he just didn't look in my windows all the time, you know. But, uh, you know, when you think of pro wrestling today, you think of guys like Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, the Ultimate Warrior. But in the old days, there were greats like uh, Freddie Blassie, Gorgeous George, Haystack Calhoun. Anybody remember Haystack Calhoun? The, the big thing he did, jumping on people, squashing them. Now, this next guy, his career as a wrestler, as a manager, has spent about 33 years is one of the greatest of all time. Let's get him out here right now. Captain Lou Albano. Yo, Captain. Yo, Brother Rick. Lou, what is the deal on the rubber bands well that's what you call eclectic rubber band some years ago down in the bowery of new york city i saw an old uh, man down on his luck and he had a rubber band in his beard and so forth and captain lou just mimicked that and picked it up it's what well, you call it, a gimmick it, it is a look it really is a look it's you should have, have them all over your face you were you would... well i had them glued to my cheek yeah. and i had them down the side and we had all kind of lights and everything going on you know in wrestling you've got showmanship and i was one of the showmen you... <laughs> Just never know when you want to wrap up a newspaper or something. You got them right there, just pull one off. There you go. You're ready Boom. to do it. You got, you got it. Of all careers for you, Lou, why wrestling? Well, Rick, uh, some years ago, I was down at the University of Tennessee. I had a, a football scholarship from uh, an Archbishop Stepanak High School. And uh, being a brilliant student and strategist that I am, <laughs> uh, exam times came around in the early 50s. Mm -hmm. And 17 of us got caught with the finals mimeograph. <coughs> which is not saying that that's what the kids should do out there, but we got caught and we got politely asked to leave school. You're out of there. So school, it was uh, Korean War time. We requested draft. I went in, luckily did no fighting. As I was in service, I met a couple of wrestlers. They put a show on for us. I looked at it and said, how much do you guys make a night? They said, a hundred bucks a night. And I said, wow, that's what I want to do. You know, we're talking the early 50s, a hundred bucks a night, three, four nights a week. Sure. Hey man, that was great money. And that's where Captain Lou got to start. You were, uh, you were obviously athletic, so what kind of wrestler were you as a pro? Well, I wasn't the big fat guy that I am today, but I was never a great wrestler. Basically, on 100%, I'd give myself maybe a 50. What I, where I feel I did make a slight mark was as a manager. The guy that hyped, the guy that did all the talking for my men. Mm -hmm. I had 17 world tag team champions, two in the continental, and one world single champion. And I've got to say... Yeah. I've got to say, Rick, that in my day, perhaps the greatest, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time is the legendary Bruno San Martino. He is without a doubt. You really think so? I, I, I believe definitely. Because you've seen all of them. You've I've seen, seen them all. Are the, you know, the wrestlers today are bigger and stronger. Wouldn't you you'd submit to that, though, wouldn't you, Lou? Well, when you say bigger and stronger, Rick, I don't know. The old wrestlers were in good shape. They do have bigger men today, but you're athlete of today. It's like in 1949, John Davis did a 309-pound clean and press. Today, you've got lifters, uh, middleweight lifters that are doing the same things. The athletes today are quicker, uh, so forth. But I don't know. The old, I like to lean towards the old athletes. I, I think that the old athletes had something special, something to offer. They were well-trained. Perhaps they weren't as large as the ones today, but they were great, great, great condition. And in your condition right now, <coughs> you're, you're a great manager, but sometimes I've seen you brought into the ring, and wild things happen. We know it's entertainment. Okay, we know it's right. entertainment, but... These guys got to get hurt from time to time. Well, I've got to say, Rick, uh, wrestling, uh, some of the promoters themselves have said sports entertainment. However, there are organizations like Universal Wrestling that are trying to bring back wrestling back to the old days. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we have a pay-per-view event. I'm with Universal Wrestling, and the 9th of June, right. we're going to crown a champion, a television champion for Sports Channel, and uh, that'll be down. It'll be held down in Florida, and it's a new organization where people like Bruno San Martino doing the commentating with Greg DeGeorge. We have Paul Orndorff, we have David San Martino, uh, we have people like Dr. Death, Steve Williams, B. Bryan. It's a new organization that's trying to get back to the basics of wrestling. You were hurt. How, how, many, how many stitches have you had? I've had well over 700 stitches in my face <laughs> from cage matches. I broke my hand three times, I broke my back and broke my collarbone. And I look like a monkey the way I do today, besides being a 60-year-old fat old man because of some of the injuries. Professional wrestlers are great great. after me. He's the captain. He always will be. Lou Albano, and congratulations with putting that whole TV thing together, too. Stick well, around. We'll be right back.